hello everyone today's lesson is on power factor so today I am going to show you so today I am going to show you about something about power factor so before we learn about power factor we have some basic knowledge we should have some basic knowledge on uh, resistive circuit capacitive circuit and inductive circuit so uh, before starting with power factor i would like to uh, spend some time with resistive capacitive and inductive circuit so everyone you know that how uh, this is the resistive circuit and if you plot on graph this resistive circuit the voltage and current will be in phase so in this case the volt the angle between voltage and current is zero degree so the if we plot here it will be like this oh sorry it will be like more or less like this so voltage and current will be in phase there is no problem here and the power hence power will be like like this so power will not go beyond zero so this is basically the resistive circuit so if you want to see the inductive circuit so we know that for inductive circuit E is equal to L D I by D T we know everyone we know this so for inductive circuit the circuit will be like this one so this is the basically inductor inductor and and if this is the inductive circuit power diagram so voltage will be here and current will be here so voltage will lead and current will lag so if we put it on a graph uh, okay we'll go next page for inductor the graph will be like this This will be the voltage and this will be the current 90 degree, 90 degree lag I mean the current will lag by 90 degree and so it will look like this current will lag by 90 degree So for, for capacitor it will look like for capacitor we know this equation everyone we know D E by D T so the circuit will look like this vector diagram will be look like this the current will lead here by 90 degree current will be lead by 90 degree and the plotting will be like this So if 
it is the V current will be like this one so and now one thing we should know the reactance so for inductor the reactance will be like 2 pi f l where l is milli henry and f is the frequency and x c will be like for 1 by 2 pi f c x so this is the reactance inductive reactance and capacitive reactance we, we all know this so there is no question for this one so now we are going to talk about the power factor so normal power factor is so important and we all more or less know about this term power factor power factor calculation and power factor correction everything so for power factor what is power factor so normally we in mathematically we call it the the ratio between the active power and apparent power or the voltage or the cos cosine of voltage and current and we can call it again with the ratio of uh, resistive uh, resistor and the inductive uh, reactance inductive and capacitive reactance well, there are so many definition here but what we call it so power factor is like active power P apparent power Q so normally we get the power triangle or the sometimes we draw this triangle this is the active power P the reactive power Q and this is the apparent power S and this is the theta angle between voltage and current so normally the P is P I cos theta so this theta is the angle between voltage and current and the angle cosine of that angle is this is the power factor so so we know that the apparent power is vi so the unit will be voltage ampere va so normally we call it kva because uh, normally we have seen which we have seen that the the unit of this apparent power is kva uh, normally we uh, denote the unit of transformer we call it kva or mva so that is the basically unit of apparent power and p is basically the apparent power into power factor so from here we can tell that 
power factor is P by S is R by Z so many thing so this is basically the mathematical explanation of power factor so what and we also have some other equation so like uh, KVA is root over of kilowatt plus KVAR. This is square. So this is the S P square by Q square. What is Q square? Oh, so what is Q? Q is the reactive power. I should denote it before. This is basically the reactive power. So now our second question is what caused the lower power factor? industry we use uh, induction motor and the induction motor is the power horse uh, of our industry so this inductor induction motor and transformer high intensity so there are so many reasons and main reason is for this induction motor motor type of thing like fan or the load inductive load those are the main reason of low power factor so in, nor in normal case we have seen uh, if without any measure if we don't if we don't take any measure so we say we have seen that in industry the normal power factor is between 60 to 80 I mean 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 so this is very poor power factor so main reason of Induction motor and so what will happen if we have low power factor? So main negative effect will come to your utility bill. In utility bill you will see that for your low power factor you will have penalty and normally in normal case utility will ask to maintain your power factor 
PF should be 0.95 and above. So if you go beyond this, go below this 0.95, your utility bill, you'll see you have some amount of penalty and to, to save from this penalty, you have to maintain a good amount, good power factor and this uh, and if you if your power factor is lower than this it will hamper your system capacity system loss will be higher suppose here i am i, I can give you one example suppose you have 1000 kV kV 1000 kV 1000 kV system and if you 1000 kV is no suppose no, I can give you another example Suppose for 11 kV system, you have a system, you have a system of 11 kV, and your appliance is suppose 500 amps. So for this, uh, I, I can calculate like. Eleven at so here five five KV means five point five MBA. So if you now we have 5.5 MPA system you have this one so if you have power factor of 0.8 you will your active power will be like If you have a po power factor of this, in that case, your active power will be So this is the difference if you have in power factor of 0 0.9, 0 0.8 and you will have a active power of 4.4 .4 megawatt so you can actively use 4.4 .4 megawatt out of this 5.5 MVA and if you have 0.95 power factor you can use 5.22 megawatt of your 5.5 MVA system. So you can save a lot of amount of power by increasing your power factor and so this is the basically your advantages and moreover 
you do not have to pay your penalty for your lower power factor so now we can discuss about how to how to correct or how to improve our power factor power factor correction pfi power factor improvement uh, so there are so many ways power factor improvement plant is there So there are so many ways, uh, PFI we can add PFI, what is PFI, perfect improvement. So there are, uh, in our uh, books we can, we have studied slow installing capacitor, installing uh, synchronous generator, we have seen so many things like this way, but uh, perfect improvement like uh, there are so one panel you you have to install one panel with capacitor inside the panel and you will have automatic suppose it is an automatic power factor improvement plan and inside this power factor improvement you will have capacitor and magnetic contactor and it will act like your automatic whenever you need it the power factor the capacitor will be started connected with the system it will connect it with parallelly so I can show you suppose like this way this sorry so this is your transformer so this is your system so there are so many feeder in your system In this bus, you will have to add one capacitor bank PFI plant, and this PFI plant will be connected with this bus parallelly with this in, in this same bus. And in this feeder, maybe you have connect your induction motors or your ball mills or suppose you have a cement factory or a paper mill or in or steel mill so for in steel mill there are uh, another there are uh, uh, special kind of power factor improvement plant but for normal application induction motor application you have to add some this this kind of automatic power factor correction plant so in, there are so many types and uh, different different way to connect the capacitor for normal application for low voltage application maybe you can use magnetic contractor but for high voltage suppose medium voltage or 3.3 kV or high voltage application you can use vacuum contractor so there's another thing we can discuss later so if you use power factor uh, in PFI how do we this increase your suppose this is your kilowatt you have to use this amount of kilowatt every time and this is the previous kva and this is kvar previous kvar so suppose if you have installed one capacitor bank and then your power factor improved a lot and it will go down below like this so now your kvar will be like this And theta will be this so your same amount of for same amount of amount of power you will need only this amount of kva 
so this new KVA will be lower than this KVA your KVA will be lower than so your utility bill will be lower and you do not have to have to pay any penalties for this so this is it from my side and i hope that you have enjoyed this enjoyed this video and you have learned something from this video i don't know if uh, if if you have any question please let me know thanks thanks for watching bye